Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. AMD's CES 2022 event has just finished, and we've got all the information for you condensed into a nice and hopefully neat package. So if you want a recap of what was announced or just want our thoughts on those announcements, you've come to the right place. So let's kick this off with a look at AMD's desktop announcements. And if you're a CPU enthusiast, the big one for you will be the Ryzen 7 5800X3D, the first Zen CPU from AMD to use their vCache 3D stacking technology. Vcache was first previewed at Computex in 2021, and it works by stacking a cache die on top of the existing 7 nanometer Zen 3 chiplet to significantly increase the amount of L3 cache. If we zoom into this rendered image of the 5800X3D, you can see the area in the middle where this extra silicon is laid on the existing CPU, with the CPU cores at the edges. With Vcache, the 5800X3D goes from 32 meg of L3 cache to a total of 96 meg, the original 32 meg on the Zen 3 chiplet, plus 64 meg of Vcache. The rest of the CPU remains essentially identical to the 5800X. It's an 8-core 16-thread design, it's an AM4 chip that works on 400 and 500 series motherboards, and it has a 105 watt TDP. However, clock speeds are slightly lower than the regular 5800X. The base has dropped from 3.8 to 3.4 GHz, and the boost from 4.7 to 4.5 GHz. I suspect this is a combination of needing to keep the extra cache within the same power envelope, and limitations on how fast you can clock the vCache component. At this stage, AMD are only saying the 5800X3D will be available in the spring, Northern Hemisphere spring that is, and no pricing has been announced. It's also the only consumer vCache chip that will be released at that time. I asked AMD whether they'd be bringing it to more CPUs, but they said this is the only one, for now at least. And that kind of makes sense because the major benefit to vCache in a consumer CPU is for gaming. Our own testing has shown repeatedly that an increase to cache capacity can noticeably boost gaming performance, and that's what AMD are claiming as well. With a 15% average gain over the Ryzen 9 5900X and slightly higher performance than Intel's Core i9 12900K, enough for AMD to claim the world's fastest gaming processor crown in their eyes. These are just first party benchmarks though, so we'll have to verify whether any of this is true and how much cherry picking is going on here. Right now, the 5900X and 5950X don't make a ton of sense for gamers, as performance isn't really any higher than the 5800X. So launching the first vCache part as a boosted 5800X is probably the sweet spot for a premium gaming CPU. So if AMD was only going to release one part, I think this would be it. Also on the CPU side, AMD teased upcoming products scheduled for release later this year. Zen 4 will be coming to desktop platforms in the second half of 2022 using 5 nanometer process technology. AMD confirmed the CPU has a different visual design as well, featuring what appears to be a larger heat spreader with different cutouts and quite an unusual design compared to the more clean heat spreaders we've seen from today's CPUs. Alongside Zen 4 will be a new socket, unsurprisingly called Socket AM5, which moves from a PGA to LGA layout, LGA1718 to be specific. It will be compatible with existing AM4 CPU coolers, but provides substantial I.O. improvements, including DDR5 and PCIe 5.0, giving AMD feature parity with Intel's current lineup. Hopefully by the time AM5 is released, DDR5 will be more available and more affordable, and AMD gave no indication DDR4 will be supported on AM5. As both Zen 4 and AM5 are expected much later in the year, details were quite light on, but everything appears to be on track for a launch this year. Moving into desktop graphics now, AMD announced the Radeon RX 6500 XT as a new mainstream option for gamers, if you can actually buy one of course, which these days is not a given. This compact GPU features 16 compute units, 16 megabytes of infinity cache, and a 2.6 gigahertz game clock, so it's essentially half of a Radeon RX 6600 XT. AMD didn't reveal the memory subsystem specs here, probably because it's expected to be just 4GB of GDDR6 on a pretty weak 64-bit bus. AMD's comparison points for the 6500 XT are the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 and the Radeon RX 570. AMD is saying performance should be roughly 30-40% to higher than the GTX 1650, and less of a gap to the RX 570, but still a fair bit faster at 1080p. These numbers should place it around the level of an RX 580 or GTX 1650 Super, so we'll see how that pans out when we review the GPU in the next few weeks. 
The 6500 XT will be available on January 19th at a $200 US MSRP, which if we go on past GPU release trends is very likely to be a fake MSRP. I will be pretty surprised if this price is maintained beyond the first batch of cards. AMD told us that availability is obviously a challenge these days, but should be similar to the 6600 series which had reasonable stock. The big question here is what the real price will end up being, and for that there's a few reference points we can look at. Currently on the scalper market, the RX 6600 and RX 6600 XT are sitting at 70 5% inflation over the MSRP. The 6600, for example, is $580 or so compared to its $330 MSRP. Then we also have AMD's comparison points. The GTX 1650 is a $270 used GPU, up from $150 at launch, and the RX 570 4GB used goes for $230, up from $170. Noting this new GPU is supposed to be faster than both of those. It's also less likely to appeal to miners with its probable 4GB of VRAM and limited memory bandwidth. My estimation is that the card will go for more like $300 new in the current market, or at least around that sort of price point. The MSRP is also pretty underwhelming, all things considered, and has clearly been pushed up due to insane GPU demand. This card is probably going to be RX 580 level in performance, and that GPU launched in early 2017 for $200 in its 4GB configuration. So nearly 5 years later, and it's looking like there's still very little movement in price to performance in the mainstream, even without factoring in AIBs, distributors, and scalpers inflating the price again in the real GPU market. It's unclear whether something like this would attract the usual mainstream buyer, who probably already has a GPU at this level of performance, given the abundance of GTX 1060s and RX 580s still in systems today. To me, the 6500 XT with just 16 compute units looks more like an RX 560 replacement, which was a $100 GPU back in 2017. Used cards can be found for about $150 today. So at most, a $150 MSRP would feel appropriate if still high. But these days, GPUs easily sell for above what they should be priced at, and AMD is trying to cash in on that. And if the real price ends up being $250 or less, it will likely be better value than what you can actually buy right now. Moving on now, AMD announced Radeon Super Resolution, which is a driver-based implementation of FidelityFX Super Resolution that can be applied to any game. If you saw my recent video looking at NVIDIA's alternative feature, NVIDIA Image Scaling, you know what to expect as they're both basically doing the same sort of thing. RSR is unlikely to be as effective as FSR as it will upscale the entire game including the UI, which does reduce visual quality compared to FSR as we saw with Nvidia's NIS. But it is nice to have feature parity between the GPU vendors, which I hoped would happen, and RSR will be included as part of AMD's Q1 2022 software release. AMD also spent a considerable portion of their event talking about new mobile products, headlined by the Ryzen 6000 series for mobile. This is a major overhaul of their APU design, bringing with it an enhanced Zen 3 Plus CPU core, TSMC 6 nanometer process technology, and RDNA 2 graphics along with big changes to their platform. The Zen 3 Plus core is designed for efficiency. It's essentially the Zen 3 design that we all know, enhanced with new power features and better power management, along with performance per watt gains brought from the shift to 6 nanometer. Given the focus here is specifically for mobile, we're unlikely to see Zen 3 Plus come to the desktop unless this exact sort of APU design is released as a socketed processor. But the CPU cores themselves aren't the star of the show here. That goes to the new RDNA 2 GPU design, which features up to 12 compute units. This is the first ever APU to support ray tracing, so yes, your ultra-thin laptop designed using a U-series APU will be able to run ray-traced games, probably just a handful of FPS, but it will be able to run them. Moving to RDNA 2 is a huge overhaul compared to the Vega design in the 5000 series. It includes more of everything, more cache, more render backends, higher frequency, and thanks to other platform features, more memory bandwidth as well. Speaking of the platform, basically everything here is brand new and overhauled. DDR5 and LPDDR5 are supported, massively improving the available memory bandwidth, which is key for feeding the RDNA2 GPU. AMD has finally moved up to PCIe 4.0 with 16 lanes split among the GPU, storage, and other devices. Previous APUs only had PCIe 3.0. 
USB 4 is included, as is support for Wi-Fi 6E. And in a surprise, these new APUs are DisplayPort 2 ready, as well as supporting real HDMI 2.1. Oh, and the media engine has been significantly overhauled as well to improve performance and add in features like AV1 hardware decoding. So yeah, this is an absolutely massive upgrade to all aspects of the platform, which did feel a bit outdated with Ryzen 5000 mobile products. Just on the memory, our understanding speaking to OEMs about upcoming laptop designs is that Ryzen 6000 APUs only support DDR5 technologies, there's no DDR4 support. However, this isn't expected to significantly increase laptop pricing, as we've been told DDR5 supply to OEMs is significantly better than at retail right now, and pricing is only slightly higher than DDR4. Plus it looks like most OEMs will be using some form of DDR5 for both new AMD and Intel laptops, so from a competitive standpoint it should be pretty even. But there's more, as Ryzen Mobile 6000 will be the first Ryzen CPU to hit 5 GHz. That's the listed boost frequency of the Ryzen 9 6980HX. The 5980HX topped out at 4.8 GHz, so it is just a 4% increase, but it's still one of those key milestones for a CPU architecture. You know, everyone wants to see 5 GHz. Across the rest of the lineup, boost frequencies are higher too. The 6600H gets 4.5 GHz, now versus 4.2 GHz with the 5600H, while base clocks are roughly the same for the H series parts. But we do get a hint of the improved efficiency here with AMD's HS series APUs for 35 watt class systems. The base clocks have risen by up to 10%, which should deliver greater performance. The cache system remains untouched at 16MB of L3 plus 4MB of L2 in the full 8 core parts. Of course, we're also getting new ultra thin U series processors with a TDP range of 15 to 28 watts. Alongside some refreshed 5000 series parts, there are two new U series SKUs. The best of which is the Ryzen 7 6800U that now tops out at 4.7 GHz, up from 4.4 GHz with the 5800U, and it gives us the full 12 compute unit RDNA 2 GPU. That should be a real beast for GPU use in a portable system. The 6 core designs in both the H and U series, so the 6600H, 6600HS, and 6600U, all feature cut down GPUs with just 6 compute units and a lower 1.9 GHz clock speed. But it's good to see all of the 8 core models getting the full 12 compute units at either 2.2 or 2.4 GHz. To go with a big overhaul of their offering, AMD are making some big and bold performance claims. In the U series, for example, AMD expects 1080p gaming performance to double with the 6800U versus 5800U in a 28 watt power envelope. Alongside this, we should expect massive gains in any application that uses GPU acceleration or media encoding, including Adobe Premiere Pro and Blender. AMD expects the 6800U to easily beat Intel's Core i7-1165G7 and Nvidia's MX450 in gaming, although both of those parts will be updated in 2022 to newer designs, so I guess you have to take that all with a grain of salt. And with FSR enabled, AMD is touting roughly 60 FPS at 1080p in major titles like Far Cry 6 and Death loop on the 6800U, which is impressive even if visual quality is reduced. That sort of gaming hasn't really been possible before on your sort of 13-inch Ultrabook type systems. CPU performance wasn't forgotten though. AMD are listing 10% higher single thread and up to 30% higher multi-thread performance for the 6800U versus 5800U at 28 watts in a couple of applications. Of course, we'll have to assess all these performance claims ourselves, the usual grain of salt applies here, but also with all the power management enhancements, AMD are expecting some designs to offer up to 24 hours of video playback on battery with lower power consumption for that task, along with others like web browsing in Chrome. Unfortunately though, we didn't get any expected performance for the H series APUs, so we'll have to discover for ourselves how they stuck up for high performance notebooks and gaming systems. Ryzen 6000 systems will be available starting in February, and they will face a fair bit of competition. Intel are expected to shortly announce new laptop processors of their own based on their Alder Lake design, which should be significantly faster than anything they currently offer going on how their desktop lineup performs. So while these performance claims are nice and the platform overhaul is much needed, 2022 is set to be a hotly contested battle in the mobile space and AMD's key selling point will likely be their fast and new integrated GPU. And the final thing to go over today are the new laptop GPUs. AMD announced the RX 6000S series, which are the regular RX 6000 GPUs optimized for thin and light laptop designs. The three offerings, the RX 6800S, 
RX 6700S and RX 6600S will run at lower wattages compared to their full M alternatives. So you can think of this like Nvidia's now defunct Max-Q series, except AMD are actually making it more obvious to buyers with their naming scheme that these are lower power models. So hopefully we don't see as much confusion there. On top of the S series, AMD are releasing five new M series GPUs for laptops. Three of these are enhanced, faster and more efficient variants of their existing lineup. AMD are claiming the RX 6850M XT should be 7% faster than the 6800M, while the RX 6650M XT and RX 6650M should be up to 20% faster than the RX 6600M. Then there's two new mobile GPUs based on their Navi 24 die, the RX 6500M and RX 6300M, which are designed for entry-level laptops that typically use GPUs around the 35 watt mark. Don't have a ton of details on these products just yet, but it sounds like the performance gains for those new M-series models are being achieved through a combination of higher GPU and higher memory clocks. The 6600M has some room to move up to 16 gigabits per second memory as an example versus 14 gigabits per second, and AMD could also enable the full 32 compute unit Navi 23 die for the 6650M XT if they wanted, but we'll learn more about those closer to launch in the next few months. For gaming laptops that use AMD discrete GPUs in 2022, several new features will be available. One is SmartShift Max, an improvement on their existing SmartShift technology that balances the power budget between the CPU and GPU while gaming, typically lowering CPU power to give more juice to the GPU. With SmartShift Max, AMD have tweaked the algorithm to work in more titles and provide a small performance boost over SmartShift in others. SmartShift Eco disables the discrete GPU while gaming on battery, allowing you to use the integrated RDNA 2 GPU in the new 6000 series APUs instead. This will deliver better battery life and improved efficiency while gaming, according to AMD. And for the hardcore laptop fans out there, the final new smart technology announcement today will be very exciting, and that's Smart Access Graphics. This is an automatic MUX switch that allows a direct connection between the display and discrete GPU while gaming, then switching over to the iGPU for efficiency when high performance graphics isn't required. MUX switches have become a popular feature for gaming laptops as direct GPU to display connections tend to improve performance by 10 to 15% compared to running the discrete GPU through the iGPU. And in the case of Nvidia GPUs, it also allows G-Sync to work. Smart Access Graphics will manage that switching automatically without a system reboot for AMD Advantage laptops that use both AMD CPUs and GPUs. This is particularly exciting because Nvidia's competing feature, Advanced Optimus, never really took off, and OEMs told us that it was hard to integrate. So hopefully AMD's solution is more viable and easier to integrate, and AMD claims most Advantage designs will use it. So those are all of AMD's major announcements in a jam-packed CES briefing. Lots of quite exciting stuff to be honest. I know Steve is keen to check out the new 5800X3D CPU to see how Vcash performs. And on the laptop side, the significant platform overhaul for Ryzen Mobile 6000 as well as the huge GPU gains due to the switch to RDNA 2 are certainly going to make it interesting to benchmark. And I think some of those platform features weren't things that I was expecting to happen. So yeah, very exciting stuff coming up. Personally speaking though, the 6500 XT is probably the least exciting announcement. I find it pretty hard to get enthused about it when there's so little apparent improvement in price to performance in the mainstream, but releases like that will hopefully help shift the GPU market to a more normal level. More supply is only a good thing these days. Anyway, that's it for this announcement and news video. We're not going to do a ton of these for all different sorts of companies. You might see some more stuff from Intel and Nvidia, but that will pretty much do our CS coverage for this year. Don't want to clog up your feed with lots of unnecessary videos. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this condensed look at AMD's announcements, got all the stuff in a fairly brief manner. If you are interested in our upcoming reviews, and there should be lots of them this month, especially for GPUs, uh, then please do consider supporting us on Patreon and Floatplane. So you can support our independent testing and get some nice perks like our Discord community, monthly live streams, and all that sort of thing. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.